you know, as you said, I think we feel uh, you know quite good about the, uh, the quarter. You know, we've been saying for you know for the last five years that one of the advantages of the universal banking model we have is that there's a countercyclicality between uh, consumer businesses and 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 a wholesale business or a you know, or an investment bank, and we saw that quite dramatically in the first quarter. Where our consumer business um, um, uh, was softer uh, because of what's going on with the economy, uh, but that was compensated for by very robust corporate and investment bank, uh, particularly in the investment bank, and and uh, and, and as you pointed out, uh, driven by what we've seen in the capital markets. And I think one of the healthy things uh, of the response to this. Um, uh, virus attack has been uh, the recovery in the capital markets, the amount of issuance and financing that has gone on there. But I think you know the the real story, not the real story, but one of the stories to add is what we did uh, around impairment. And uh, so we took a 2.1 impairment charge, which is very high. That led to a um, an ROT for the group at about 5.1%. In that, um, um, we basically took our credit models uh, that we use for the consumer businesses primarily, and we ran through a very harsh uh, economic uh, scenario in terms of unemployment for the year, in terms of, of GDP, and that led itself to a 1.4 impairment charge. And so ultimately, we ended up with a 5.1% ROT and uh, in a profitable quarter, so we feel good about how conservative we were, but it also ended up with a very profitable quarter. Well, can you just tell us then, because obviously you've modelled this, as you look at the run rate of impairment charges at this point and uh, customers, both uh, corporate and consumer, who look unlikely to repay their loans on schedule, what does that current run rate look like compared to your model, overshoot or undershoot? You know, we're not seeing it yet. But what we put in our models was a real spike in unemployment, particularly in the U.S., up to about 17% for three quarters, Uh, a contraction in the short term of the U.S. and U.K. economies around 50 or 40%. So that's how extreme it was. And so that punches out a number of what you might expect in the future if the economy is that challenged. Um, Let's see what will happen. But it, it gives us, in a sense, a reserve on impairment that we haven't seen yet. And if it doesn't come, we get to release that reserve at a later date. Jez, very good morning to you. I'm just on the south side of the river, so I might swim over for a cup of tea in a moment. But um, in the meantime, um, I'm seeing warnings from the FSB, from the retailers, <clears throat> from anyone representing big and small companies that they think the worst is still to come. They think they can run out of cash within the next 12 weeks in some quarters as well. If we get on top of the epidemic, do we have a greater crisis in the second and third and possibly the fourth quarter to come from UK small businesses and UK medium-sized businesses as well? You know, the tough thing to to measure here is clearly this is an economic crisis that, you know, we haven't seen uh, for sure since the Great uh, Depression. And you might even compare it in the short term to what they went through. But however, different than in the 1920s, this is being met by a government response of incredible proportion. What the governments in the U.K. and the U.S. are doing in terms of monetary policy, the Bank of England, the Fed, in terms of uh, Her Majesty's Treasury, in terms of economic policy, it's just, it's just extraordinary. So we're going to watch two tsunamis hit at the same time. And so to, to predict how those two tsunamis are going to play out is really tough. I think the challenge really is more, you know, a year, two years from now, is how will we all pay for this? And and as we look at Barclays, our job is to keep the bank very strong financially, well capitalized, in a comfortable place. So when the recovery comes, we can play our part in helping that recovery, uh, because all of us in the private sector are going to have to join arms with the public sector to navigate uh, what we're about to go through over the next couple of quarters and, and years.